Hello guys, this is Alex Ding, and today I'm going to play, I'm going to be playing a three-game blitz match with candidate master Pratik Srivas. So the first game I'm going to be playing white, and okay, let me increase the size of the screen. Okay, so I'm going to be playing e4, and all right, he opts to go into a Sicilian, and. I'm actually pretty glad because uh, I can usually hold my own against some titled players if they play a opening I know well. Okay, here I have the option of playing a bishop c4 nidor, or a bishop g5 nidor, something like a bishop c4. This is known as the Fischer Sosen variation. And okay, he plays an early b5, so I can play. Oh, I can try to use my opening novelty. All right, let's see if he goes into the into the same uh, lines that I play. Okay, so after castle, he should be playing bishop e7. I can play queen f3. And after queen c7, if he... Well, if he plays queen c7, then I can use my opening novelty. I'm not going to say anything about my opening novelty unless he plays it. <laughs> Okay, so the Fischer Sozin uh, variation of the of the Sicilian Nidor kind of went out of style uh, because of this d6 pawn push. Okay, well here my opponent plays queen d6, so let's see. I'm not exactly sure if this is a line. I haven't actually encountered it ever, but uh, it makes sense. It's trying to pressure this knight. In the center from the side, and he's probably going to play bishop e7 at some point, or knight c6. So here, I think I'm just going to play bishop e3. Because after bishop e3, uh, my bishop will be eyeing his uh, eyeing his queen on b6. So I had I just have to make sure there is no like shenanigans with him playing an early b4. So if he plays, if I play bishop e3, he plays b4. I can play knight takes e6, discovering an attack on the queen on b6. So yeah, I think I'm safe for right now with bishop e3. So the queen probably has to go to c7 or something. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to play it because I don't want to run out of time. And then I might be playing a queen f3 move here, right? Eyeing this rook on a8 maybe threatening a d5 pawn push. And this is a common theme in a lot of Sicilian games. If white can get his uh, white can get his pawn on e5, uh, it'll cause a lot of trouble for black's position because then this d6 pawn is going to be very weak right here. Okay, so he plays Okay, so he plays queen b7 and queen b7 is a move that is common in these types of positions. Because in the Fisher Sozin, uh, I might want to sack on e6 at some point. So this keeps the bishop uh, guarding this pawn on e6. So here he's attacking this pawn. Uh, so now queen f3 is out of the question. So do I play an e5 move here? e5, d takes e5, knight f3, plays knight c6, I can play knight g5. So that looks interesting. I, this is probably not the best way to deal with it. And of course, uh, I, I'm pretty sure it's, he's forced to take, yeah. So he can't pl afford to play knight d7. Knight f d7, sorry. Okay, so now the whole key to what I was planning, knight g5. So if he plays something, I don't know, risky like h6, I can bring my knight to this nice e4 square. Okay, so he plays bishop d7, and now I can... Can I afford to play f4 here? Um... If 
if I play f4, c takes, I take this rook. Or, you know, this is tough, strong player. <laughs> okay, so if I do rook takes f4, this should be set. Okay, so I'm going to f4. I'm running out of time here. So once again, I think he's forced to take this. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to play bishop takes f4 because I'm going to improve this bishop to a nice diagonal. Yeah, there's no need to weaken my rook by playing rook takes f4. So here, bishop e7, probably he wants to prepare to castle. Or maybe even castle queenside here. Well, actually, no, not yet because if knight takes f7, fork from his rooks. So he probably wants to play bishop e7 and with bishop... Oh, okay. So he checks me and I have to take from h1. And then after he castles, I can play knight c to e4, which is what I've been playing. Or maybe knight g to e4. Hmm, it's tough. Okay, he postpones castling and eyes my queen. But here I think I have a nice move, knight c to e4. With the idea that if I'm first of all attacking his bishop on c5, and if he plays like knight takes uh, e4, I can play knight takes e4, and his bishop c i his bishop sorry his bishop uh, c8 idea doesn't work anymore because of bishop e6. Okay, he plays bishop e7, so now I can wedge my bishop in here. So after c4, right? Okay, bishop c8, pinging it. So here... Um, man, this, this pin is annoying. So I'm trying to deflect it so I can play with bishop e4. There we go. Pinning his own knight. And then there might be some ideas of a rook set. Oh, here. Here, rook takes f6. Yeah, 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 this, this works nicely. Rook takes f6. And if he plays g takes f6, I have knight to e4. Oh, nice, I'm winning. Okay, so knight e4, attacking this f7, f6 pawn, putting him in a mating net, right? So he probably has to play... Rook d7, and then after knight takes f6, check, king d8, queen d2, and, oh yeah, man, okay, this is really good for me. And then here I play queen d2 like I planned, plan to come to a5. And wow, wow, I actually didn't think that would work, but now that I look at this position a little bit clearer, this seems like, yeah, this is, in a, this is a really good position for me. Yeah, if you look, his, his king's escape squares are completely gone because of this bishop on d6. So this actu this bishop actually did something. So as you can see, his c7 and d7 squares are guarded by my bishop, and then his final e8 escape square is guarded by my knight. So if I just play any check in this position, uh, he would be checkmate. Okay, so I just have to hope I can hold out for maybe 25 seconds or so. A tricky position so he can maybe play queen d6 i mean queen b6 blocking off my queen a5 check and then i'll play rook a to d1 so i'm gonna prepare that Okay, he plays that, so I'm going to play bishop takes c6. After queen takes c6, I have queen a5 check, and he's going to be losing it to it. Check. Right, deflection. After rook here, I'm just going to take over here. Okay, he plays there, so I'm going to actually pin here. 
Check me six. Okay, it doesn't rhyme. I'm going to lose on time. Okay, good game. Alright, so I almost had him in that game. Yeah, I have to learn to play a little bit faster. Okay, so ooh, that was an exciting game. So the score now is 1-0 for Candidate Master Pratik. So okay, so now I realize he's a d4 player. So I'm going to be playing Banco if he plays c4. Or well, maybe the... Eh, nah, I'm going to play Banco. Okay. So the idea of the Banco is to open up the queen side. So I'm going to sacrifice these pawns, my queen side pawns, in order to... Oh, he plays the b6 now. Okay, so... Yeah. I, with the b6 line, he kind of uh, lessens my queenside, uh, he kind of like restricts my pieces a little bit, so it's kind of a hard time trying to figure out how to develop. So maybe I can play a check structure, like a, a Banco, I mean the Bononi check structure with e5, and after e4 I solidify the central pawns, but that's kind of a slow game and that's kind of not my style. So. Maybe e6. Hmm, that's tough. Yeah, I think e6 in those positions are usually good. If he plays d4, I play. I uh, trade on d5, and then I play bishop d6. And if he plays queen e2, I play bishop d7. Ah, so okay, take. Well, you know, I don't know. Bishop d6 might not be so good, because after... Oh, he takes with the knight. Okay, uh... One of my friends, for some reason, said this was wrong. Oh, it's because I get a temple on the queen, that's why. Or the pawn, if he takes with the pawn. Okay, so after here, I play bishop d7. And this should be nice for me. After knight b... Oh, knight e7. I mean, knight e2, sorry. Okay, so here I have to decide between d6 or bishop d6. d6, uh, I might have to deal with this backwards pawn later on, and this bishop, the only way this bishop is getting out is with g6 and queen ketamine. But now that some of the pieces have been traded off, I'm not so sure this bishop is going to be that important. And a lot of the tactics in these kind of positions are gone. So, hmm. It's tough right now finding a proper method of developing all my pieces. So maybe if I play g6 immediately, he plays knight c3, bishop g7, and then bishop d3, and he has no problems. So... Mm, the immediate bishop d6... Okay, so his problems right now are that he can't really develop his dark squared bishop to anywhere useful because it's doing a defensive duty of guarding the b2 pawn. So maybe I don't need a queen ketoid. So, alright, um, choices. Okay, I think I'm going to play d6 and then play it safe. And play knight ge7, knight e5, bishop e7, bishop f6. So I'm not compromising my uh, pawn kingside pawn structure right now. Not exactly sure if that's a big deal or not, but I don't know. It's always nice to have a safe king. Okay, knight c3. I'm gonna take knight b7. I mean knight b e7. Sorry. 
And then if we place bishop d3, I can play bishop d7, castles, castles, and then play bishop f6 at some point. Oh, he might also have the idea of coming to knight a4. Hmm. No, just kidding. Knight a5, knight a4 loses to queen d4. Well, not loses, but he waits the move and I improve my queen. So he has to play knight c3 again. Because remember, it's double attacking this knight here and checking it. So yeah, I think, yeah, bishop e2 and then bishop e7, we're both going to castle. I have to somehow get find a way to get this light squared bishop out, or maybe trade it for his light squared bishop, because this one is just getting completely locked in by this pawn. So I have to find some way to play castle, castle. So I have to find some way for me to, yeah, get into the game, because right now I'm pretty much playing with one less piece. Okay, so here I'm just gonna play bishop f6, improving this bishop. See here now the problem with e6, yeah, he can play bishop f4, talking to this weak backwards pawn. So maybe I can solve with knight e5, right, temporarily blocking access to the d6 pawn. Hmm, I'm already not liking my position. So maybe I can play like knight e5 and play bishop c8 and get this out, but that might be too slow. Or maybe I can play a5 and trade off bishops like this. It's unclear. Yeah. Um, these kinds of positional uh, recouping and like regrouping of all of my pieces is not my strong suit. I like to attack immediately. So I like to complicate the position. So actually, a lot of the a lot of the tactical like fire in this position is gone. So. Right now we just have to see how we can improve our pieces to the optimal squares and then can we uh, actually start our attacks. Okay, he plays queen a5, a4, sorry. Hmm. It's targeting my knight, but what else is it doing? I'm not, sh I'm not so sure. So now I can just play knight e5, right? And yeah, my pieces seem to be nicely. So he's just, he just, oh, maybe, no, no. I thought maybe he would have played queen d3 next move, but I mean, he would have just played queen d3 in the first place. So knight e5, and then I might bring my rooks to the e-file. Okay, here I'm gonna tr just try a cheap trick. <laughs> knight g6. So here, if he doesn't do any, okay. So he obviously saw it, but if he didn't do anything, I could take the knight for free because his rook's unguarded. So here, I obviously don't want to trade, so I'm gonna bring my bishop to a strong central square. It's where it's gonna be eyeing some nice pieces around his king side. I might play a c4 push if he doesn't guard this, and it also. If you look, it's his d pawn is now undefended. So I think he the only move that solves all of this is either bishop c4 or queen c4. Queen c4 is kind of committal because after, okay, so yeah, he plays bishop c4, and then I'm gonna play knight e5 again. Okay, he brings his knight back. Hmm, how do I get my pieces in the game? Can I afford to play a5? Yeah, I'm gonna try to play a5. Oh, wait. Ah, I gotta stop rushing. Okay, he missed knight f5, which is pretty crushing in this position. Okay, uh, bishop g6, bishop takes e3. He's down on time, so I'm just gonna trade off. Rook takes e3, and then... Right, his queenside pawns are going to be pretty weak. Oh. Um, 
which way to take. It's probably up here, right? And after this, I don't want to trade, so I'm going to bring it over here. I don't want to have to leak that link, so I'm just going to play g6, and I'm going to play f5. So with f4, I can just take, take, and then bishop a6, and my position is nice. So now I solve the problem of my light squared bishop. So he has to defend all this. And then she can just trade off here. And let's see, how do I do this? Oh, wait, I'm down on time too. Shoot. Okay, so his knight can't go anywhere useful right now, and his rook's stuck guarding this. I'm gonna play f6. Okay, well, I don't want to get my piece in the game. Okay, now this pawn is fallen. Okay. What the heck? Oh, he was trying to tie me out. Okay, all right, I see. He plays dirty. Okay. All right, so in this game, uh, in this next game, I'm just going to try to play fast because I have winning positions in both of them. And I don't want to throw this away, so, okay. Going all out. And he already played this for you, so you know how this goes. So he's going to maybe try to transpose into a Shevin Ninjin or something. I think that's what it's called. Uh, knight c3. And I'm going to play g4, which is one of my side lines. It's... Surprisingly very, okay, so he maybe wants to, okay, so he's like combining like a Taimanov with a Nidorf with a Sheveningen. Okay, so I'm going to play a3. Bishop b7. Take my bishop. Knight c6. Castle. Play bishop b3. Okay, he brings his knight to g6, which is, which is interesting. Mm, maybe he wants to come to f4. Because now my f4 square is weak, right? Because I pushed e5 and g4. Okay, so... Yeah, maybe g5 here was a little bit too early. So here I'm just going to... Hmm. How we can proceed? Maybe just h3 right now. Okay, so here, okay, white plays bishop d6, but can I afford to take that pawn? I'm kind of scared. Okay, so bishop takes g7, rook g8, bishop f6. I don't know, is this just a free pawn? What kind of compensation? Well, he obviously has compensation for it because. His pieces are nicely developed, and they're all aiming at my king. And now knight f4 seems pretty nice. But I mean, what are the repercussions of playing this? Does he have like a Zishinzug? I'm not sure. Well, you know what, it's online chess, so I'm just going to take it. Okay, knight bishop f6. So yeah, I'm trying oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, so now he wants to play h5. Yeah, there we go. He plays h5 to open up my kingside. So I think I have to play f3. Taking is suicide. So yeah, after f3. Oh, okay, I see now. Oh, it's too late. Okay, see, my, now my bishop kind of sucks. It's pretty much being a tall pawn, guarding all my other pawns. And then he can play knight f4. And then he takes advantage of my hole on f4 and if you just look at my king side it's very very weak on the dark squares and so he's probably going to attack there somehow so actually maybe instead of knight f4 he can play knight e5 knight e5 getting his rook into action and then take take 
95 queen d2 knight c4 getting his knight up to the c4 okay so here got check and then he wants to bring his queen to f4 okay he pl plays knight f4 here but can i just play g5 and lock the position here somewhat i'm gonna play g5 if he plays h4 i play queen d2 Yeah, so h4 is not a problem. Okay, so I play d2. Mm, okay, well, taking with the king wouldn't be so great, but now I can just take with the queen. And I think I have solved all my problems here. I'm just up a pawn. Because now my queen guards the dark squares. So my queen has a defensive role now, but I am just up a pawn. So here I can play rook ab1. And yeah, my position seems pretty pretty good. And here I might even consider okay, so with bishop d3, he's guarding some central square, so he's halting my f4 push, which I was actually considering playing here. So after rook c8, I'm gonna chase this bishop away. Can he play bishop f4 here? Probably not, because then I can just double up on the d-file, and then there's so much pressure there. Okay, so he probably has to go back to b6. And then I can play f4. Okay, here, I'm just going to double. Okay, bishop c6, guarding that. And then, can I play a4? Yeah, I'm going to play a4 here. A4, B4, Knight D5. Triple, double, quadruple, exclaim. <laughs> so remember, uh, in one of my videos uh, that I was discussing opening the e-file of Vukovic, this is pretty much, I'm, I'm using his ideas here. Okay, so now I get to play the amazing Knight D5. So I'm opening up the e-file. So if he plays E takes D5, I can play Bishop takes A4. Or actually, no, E takes D5, I can play B6. And then after d takes c6, bishop b5, queen d2, a5, queen e3, and his position is completely collapsing. So he takes, so I take the pawn. But here I'm threatening to open up the e-file again, so e5, and then c. Oh wait, this isn't as good as I thought it would be. Okay, I can play c3, I think. First get rid of that weakness, and then I can play queen d4, threatening this pawn even more. I thought this was completely winning. Why is e5? Why did I think I could stop e5? Okay, so uh, that that was probably a mistake by him. Because the reason this is a mistake is now he has no counterplay on the queen side. Once it's once uh this queen side is completely locked up with his pawns, I can begin my attack on the center and his king side. And I don't have to worry about him striking back. So here I can take three pawns. Okay, so now I'm just up two pawns. And after the queen here, I can play. Maybe I can transfer my rooks here now. Yeah, I'm gonna transfer my rooks to the king side. Because the queen side is locked up, like I said. So I don't have to worry about that. Here. I'm gonna try a queen trick here, queen g4. Queen takes g4, rook takes g4. Okay, so now I'm, wait. Okay, so hopefully my king side pawns will prove to be a decisive factor in this game. Okay, I need to guard my weak back rank. Also transfer my rook there later on, and then guard the pawn, and I'm just going to push my pawns. Okay. Uh, these are some really exciting games here. Mm. 
What is black clay? Cause yeah, I don't, I don't see a concrete way that black can stop my connected passes here. Cause my my bishop guards first of all this important square right here. H A. Oh, I can't highlight. Sorry. Okay, so here I can just pawn storm, right? How does he stop it? Yeah, I don't think there's a good way for him to stop it because, like I said before, my bishop guards the promotion square. His bishop is completely cut off from defense, and the only piece guarding him is his rook. And then now with rook a2, his rook is off sides too. He's going to have to play rook a4 to get his rook into the game. So this rook is now doing nothing, and aside from the minimal threat of... Okay, so here I'm just going to put some more pawns. Okay, here, yeah, this is winning. So here, can I, let's see, can I just promote immediately? No, actually, no, this is better. Bishop g7 first, trapping the rook, obviously. <laughs> okay, after take, okay, I just have to make sure there's no tricks here. Yeah, there's no tricks. Yeah, this is winning. Um, here. Okay, I have to take this because my rook came here. And then I get a queen. And his rook can't defend here, so I can get a queen here. Take. And then discover check. So ooh, yeah, that was a good that was a good game. All right, so this game ended in a win for candidate master Pratik Srihas, I believe. This is his chess.com profile. Um, he was wondering if any of you guys were interested in some lessons. Uh, he's obviously a very strong player and. He beat me uh, in this match. Um, he's looking for uh, any players from the beginning level up to maybe about expert. And he is, his rates are pretty low. And uh, I definitely recommend him uh, as a coach for any players who want to improve. So his chess.com profile is onlinegeek1988. And I will also post a link to his chess.com profile in the video description. And yeah, tell me, uh, tell me, tell me what you guys think, and just comment in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much.